Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wally DM. Today, our adventuring party encounters a sinister metal box. Now, this box has four keyholes on each side of it, and they find a set of keys that will fit set box. But if they put the wrong key in the wrong keyhole, then we may have a little bit of an issue. Today, we're going to take a look at a puzzle that you can find in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and this one's called Skeleton Keys. Before we get started with the video, I'd just like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. It really encourages me to make more videos. Also, if you have not joined our Wally DM Discord, head on over there now and join us. We have great conversations going on all the time. And don't forget to pick up my D&D puzzle book, Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters, available now on Drive-Thru RPG. Now let's get started with the video. Now for this puzzle, our characters in a room set up very similar to this. They see a sinister looking metal box with an iron lock built into each of its four sides. Now each lock sports a keyhole with a sculpted image above it. So on this side of the box is a keyhole with a image of a snake above it, this one an image of a spider, this one an image of a bat, and on this side of the box an image of a wolf. Now if one of our characters were to come over here and take a look at this desk, they're going to find two things. The first thing that they're going to find is an iron ring with four iron keys on it. Now each of these four keys have a different number of teeth. Now also along with the keys they're going to find this journal and written into this journal is the following. The spells on these locks are all the same, though each possesses a unique name. Count on your answer to unlock the way, but use the wrong key to your dismay. Now again, if the characters take a look at the keys, they're going to notice that each one has a different number of teeth. This iron key has three teeth, this one has four, this one has five, and this one has six, although they are all relatively the same length. Now, if one of our characters were to come over here and take one of the keys, let's say he takes this key here and puts it into the side with the snake, this is the wrong key to use for this side, and 1d4 snakes are going to appear, and we're going to have to roll for initiative. Now, the same thing's going to happen if the wrong keys are stuck into the wrong side of the box. Let's say if we take this key with the number six or with the six teeth and we put it on the side of the wolf, then 1d4 wolves are going to appear and our characters are going to have to participate in combat. Now, once these beasts are summoned into the room, they're going to remain there for 10 minutes or until they reach zero hit points. Now, they can also not be charmed or frightened. And do remember, this is a metal box, so it's going to be too heavy to move. And also, it is not going to be able to be unlocked with thief tools or anything like that. In fact, I would go as far to say if a thief tried to pick the lock, let's say trying to pick the lock with the side of the bats, then 1d4 bats are going to appear. Now with regards to the keys, if you have a copy of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, I highly suggest using the image that is in the book. Or if you have this on D&D Beyond, you can print this out for your players and they give really good images of the keys in this book. And in fact, if you were going to give them this handout, I wouldn't even tell them that there's a different number of teeth. I'd just let them be able to look at the page and be able to determine that for themselves. So with all the information given, being the verse in the journal, the four different iron keys, and the different locks with the images depicted above them. Do you know how to solve the puzzle? I'll give you a second if you'd like to figure it out. Did you get it? Great. Let's go over the answer. Well, as far as the solution goes, I actually use the icons of these creatures intentionally. I didn't want to spell them out because it kind of gives away the puzzle. So I would definitely recommend using images if you can. But let's take a look at each of these individually. Now, in my opinion, you don't even really need the verse to be able to solve it, but it does help a lot. So let's take a look at the verse again. The spells on these locks are all the same, though each possess a unique name. So it's referring to each of these creatures that are on the side of the box, and they have their names that are unique. And I would definitely recommend that if the characters spell these out, that they would be on the right path. Count on your answer to unlock the way, but use the wrong key to your dismay. Now the last part of it, we know if they use the wrong key, then some of these creatures are going to be summoned. But that third line is what's most important. Count on your answer to unlock the way. So what we need to do to solve the puzzle is we need to count each letter that is represented by the icon on the box. So for wolf, there's four letters, one, two, three, four. Bat, there's three letters, one, two, three. Spider is six letters, one, two, three, four, five, six, and snake has five letters, S-N-A-K-E. Now that we know how many letters are in each of these creatures, we can correspond the keys. So the key with three teeth goes in the side of the bat, 
The key with four keys goes in the side of the wolf. The key with five teeth goes in the side with the snake. And the key with six teeth will go inside of the spider. And if all four of those keys are used, then this box will open and our characters have successfully solved the puzzle. So that puzzle is called Skeleton Keys. And once again, you can find that in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything or on D&D Beyond. Now this puzzle in Tasha's is considered an easy puzzle, as the characters should be able to figure it out, and even if they don't, it's only going to take a few tries of a few creatures being summoned before they get it what's going on. But with that being said, the book does offer a few ideas, the first one being if you'd like to make this harder, then instead of putting a picture of a bat, or a wolf, or a spider, to instead use a riddle or a clue, something that the characters would have to figure out before figuring out what animal that is or what it represents. Now Tasha's also includes a few hints so if your characters aren't able to pick up what's going on, and the first one is to allow them to make an intelligence nature DC 10 check. The character knows that natural knowledge about bats, snakes, spiders, and wolves in general won't help here. So what the book is saying is the characters might be stuck on the animals or the creatures or the insects or what have you that's on the box, but that isn't exactly what they need to do to figure it out. It's actually the letters in the word bat or the letters in the word spider that they need to do in order to match up the keys. Another hint check that Tasha's Cauldron provides for us is a Wisdom Perception DC 10 check. The characters realize that the keys, skull-shaped heads, are all the same and probably have no bearing on the puzzle solution. So once again, this is just an easy check that we can have the players make and just kind of steer them away from anything that they're doing that's getting them off track. So that's all I have for you today. What did you think of the puzzle? Is this something that you could use in your game? And if so, what would you do differently? And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I'm going to cover all of the puzzles in Tasha's Cauldron and give you a proper walkthrough and a demonstration of how they work. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video and on to the next.